everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. It is in the manila envelope marked <laughs> ads. ads. I have to get my ads. Yes, you will. We'll be, we'll be right back. You know, we're in the season of, and it's it's on it's on uh, point. It's on topic. What? Well, I'm going to ask Pat about this. Oh. You got a high school transgender transgender sprinter, a biological male. Yeah. Well, he competed against the girls in the Connecticut State Open, and he win he wins the hundred meter dash. You know, going away. Ooh. But in the winter, he competed as a guy in the tra- in the indoor track events. Pat. Oh, well, you can't go back and did he have a secretariat like uh, 31 length win? You got a transgender sprinter, a, bi- a biological male, ran as a girl in the Connecticut State meet and crushed the field in the 100 yard dash. Are there some complaints? Yeah. But in the winter, he competed as a male in the indoor track season. Was it before don't you make, switch? Don't you got to make up your mind? Well, What's I the switch uh, date? You know. I think you can be uh, you got you got six months and then you can change your mind again. I don't know how that works. I'm not really sure. We didn't have much of that in Murray County in the 1950s. So no, I, don't know. I think that's crossing Miss, the foul line. line. I I don't know. Nobody seems to be too worked up about it. So. <laughs> I think it's a. I uh, I think I, it's a product of 2018. Uh, unless the uh, unless the uh, parents of the second place finisher aren't real happy, so. And then at that point, you kind of seem like a sore loser, don't you? Yeah, I, it, yeah, I don't know. Well, plus the kids are being taught, you know, inclusivity. Yes, and they, yes, they can't. Yes, uh, they yes, can't yes. very well start complaining that, you know, mm-hmm. Leroy, who's he's got a muscle mass advantage, though. Yeah, that uh, should that should be taken into consideration. Maybe he should start like. Three or three yards further behind, or something. They like gotta come yeah. out. See how it comes. Put them in yeah. the in the the, yeah. the 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 starter thing, the blocks, mm-hmm. three feet behind. Yeah, that's a good idea. See, the fixer comes up with another. Got it. Uh, Boom. <laughs> Sign, seal, deliver. Not a, nah, I think a good stride, right? Let's red stamp it. Stride. That's right. I that's asked right. Reavers this earlier, and this is this is what has to happen for the Twins to have a season. Are they capable of running off about a ten and two run? Uh, well, last year, out of nowhere, they went 20 and 6 in August. I don't know if they have this in them offensively, but, uh, or hitting wise. I, I said offensively. Uh-huh. Baseball, I never use that word in baseball. I always say hitting. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know. I don't think they're very good. They don't appear to be, do they? I, uh, but here's what frightens me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a long season and it's always streaky. Mm-hmm. What happens if uh, Esky and uh, Rosario cool off? Mm-hmm. Have that two weeks where they hit two hundred. Then what's going to happen? Then you're not going to crack five hundred. <laughs> How good is Escobar, though? Did you see the little video of his post game interview, fellas? I missed I did it. Not. Okay, Audra Martin gets him out there, and it, you got it, it. It's everywhere, and she says two more doubles today, Eduardo. 26, you lead the major leagues, and he rolls his eyes, like flutters his eyes, <laughs> like how, how amazing he is. Just, he is uh, in, I first covered the Twins probably in the early 70s, some. So, what do we got here? 48 years? Yeah. He's one of the five best guys they've had, as far as a guy. Yeah. He is a character. Hmm. Never ends. Name Never your top ends. five. Well, this is just personality no, wise. I'd have to go Puck, yeah. Randy Bush, one of my all time favorites. Uh, who from the seventies? Lyman. Yep, loved Lyman. Yep. Tony. Oh yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony's number one on 
all lists of the, <laughs> as a guy. Yeah, I saw him again yesterday doing the Spanish broadcast. He was. There but you're putting Spanish. Escobar in his camp now. Oh man, he's funny. Mm-hmm. He's just a he's just a character. And the funny thing is, three years ago he was like the clubhouse comic character that Suzuki'd come in and rap in the side of the head. <laughs> had. When he came in, every Suzuki loved to torment him, mm-hmm. but it was a really, a, they were best of friends. Mm-hmm. But, come on, come on, don't do that. You know, he'd make this big deal out of it, which he didn't care about. But he, he's great at, uh, was great at that. But now he's their best player. And I <laughs> and love. he's still doing this. And he's not, there's no arrogance there, but you're going to have to give him three years, 30 million here pretty soon. I mm-hmm. love the fact that he learned to speak English by watching Top Gun. Top Gun, yes. <laughs> And he used to pull in, he used to pull in to, with a, I don't think, he might, have, I don't think he had a convertible, but he had the windows up down there in Fort Myers. And he'd pull up the ballpark playing that every, what's the big song out of Top Gun? Take My Breath Away. Take My Breath Away. That was like, he'd, he'd always sing, take, his favorite songs were Take My Breath Away and this other crap. And that's, that's how he says he learned how to speak English. By, which, by the way, he's very good at, but he still brings the interpreter out. Sure. I think all the Spanish, most of the Spanish guys now are pretty good with it because they teach them when they're, you know, young guys. But they don't want the the interpreter get fired, so they let him, uh, so they keep having him stand there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his favorite song. He'd come in. He'd, he'd come into the clubhouse singing every breath you take. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. You know they're remaking that damn movie? No. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. They, they, it was fine the way it was. I think it's still Tom Cruise, too. What was the name of the blonde? Kelly, Kelly McGillis. McGillis. Kelly McGillis. Yep. Boy, did she go down hell in a hurry. <laughs> I hate to say anything, but she was fetching. Oh, yeah. And about five years later, something happened. I don't know. I would pay money to watch Eduardo Escobar pull up in his car with this just <laughs> blaring from the speakers. Oh, my God. Uh, he's got, I think he got married to a gal who already had at least two kids. I think he married a gal. <laughs> and... Anyway, he's got three fairly young boys. Mm-hmm. And when I, I did a real long piece on him a couple of years, three years ago. I just loved it, writing it. But I said, what are the name of your sons? He said, second base shortstop and third. <laughs> you know, because he, he's got three, you know, because he plays all three. He says, second base short and third. Is what he, he's, a, he's a hell of a guy. Where does and, he live in the off season? He lives now in Florida. He doesn't go back to Venezuela. Venezuela is such a he mess. He can't go back to Venezuela. There is no Venezuela. Venezuela is such a mess. In fact, I think he moved his, uh, he got his uh, family moved here. His, his Socialism and, utopia. You uh, in Venezuela. Yeah, they've ruined that doesn't country. doesn't work. They've ruined that country. Mm-hmm. But he's, I think he's living in Miami. They're somewhere in the Miami area. So, Well, plus a guy like him can't go back there. He'd get kidnapped. There's a fighting chance, yeah. you know, unless you can afford to have security and stuff like that. But Do we have uh, to spend a summer now uh, worried about whether LeBron will return to Cleveland or not? Oh, God. It's, Joe, you know, last year, once the worst playoffs in the history of NBA finished, they were better this year, but not in the finals. But uh, two days later, nobody cared, and it was, where's Kyrie going Where's Paul George going? Where's this guy going? That guy going? Well, with LeBron, multiply it by 10 times. ESPN is going to spend two hours a day until he chooses a team. LeBron watch. Well, might he stay with Cleveland? I don't think so. It depends upon how hard winning, how uh, motivated he is to win another championship because right now they got to go out and pick out where they want to. I don't. He wouldn't go to Golden State because that would be a non. I mean that title would be even, a chemistry problem. That title, no, that title wouldn't even count mm-hmm. if you go out there and play with those guys. But he might go to Philadelphia. I think he's going to go to the Lakers. Myself, I think he's got a house out in L.A. I think he's going to live out there. I think he's going to go out there and. Uh, and play in LA for become a become a mega mega star in uh, in in LA. So his career essentially has not peaked. He's still ascending, isn't he? 
He's no, not old. no, he hasn't ascending, but he's he just had right now. He just had about his best season in about three, four years. He's thirty two now, but he's thirty six really because he signed right out of high school. So he played, he's played more basketball than and and count what two Olympics at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's played more basketball at this age than anybody in history. He's played a phenomenal. This year he led. He didn't miss a game, and he led the NBA in uh, minutes mm-hmm. played. So, and so he played eighty-two games. Like played the whole long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is on LeBron's list no, of favorite no, songs. No. I don't think so. he doesn't use this to get hyped in the no, locker room. No. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just a moment as soon as Ruck takes us to a break. Bob, go ahead, please. Hey, the the inside track on the L.A. Lakers, there's a guy named Clay Mosier from Minnesota here that was an, uh, an advanced scout for Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron came into the league. He is now a bench coach for the L.A. Lakers. All righty. Thank, Thank you. You, <laughs> you bet. I okay. mentioned this earlier. Michael Rand in the Star Tribune they had a great point about Ovi Ovechkin's gleeful celebrations <laughs> with this cup, which he apparently has not let go of yet, no. right? Uh, the parade's tomorrow. So. Rand had a great point. We live in the age when the superstar free agents, they – shop themselves around attempting to buy themselves a title yes. or, or attempting to maneuver themselves into a title yeah. situation. Not so much in hockey. It's happened, but not so much. Not this guy. No. And here's the no. great stat. Only John Elway, 15 years with the Broncos, had to wait longer to win a title than Ovechkin <laughs> with his original team. Isn't that something? Yes. So, Reavers, you're an expert on this. Okay. The uh, the keg stand. Uh, oh my God, the, that was uh, my favorite now, moment. What, what is the process here? Because that that was before me, before so, my time. Here's what you do. The, he, a, he's drinking. This is what do they call it? A keg stand? Yes. So the keg needs to be probably most likely on the ground inside of a bucket. Each okay. hand is placed on the sides of the keg where you would normally lift the keg up. Yeah. Okay. Then you got your buddies to lift up one leg on each side. Yep. They hoist up the leg. You start down in the spout. Boom. And you can see how <laughs> so long you can last. So coming out of the spout. Huh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> OB, oh. that, that video is out there. And by the way, when he finished, gleefully, he was... Already so hammered, oh god, he yeah. could barely stand up. Then yesterday they send out the video. His wife sends out the video of him barbecuing in the backyard, it's singing, we, singing are we are the champions. But the flame looks like <laughs> he's doing it with charcoal, and the flame looks like mine used to after you put a quart of that stuff. It's just it looks like a house is burning, and he said, "We are the champions," and he's hammered. Oh. Barbecue. He must. He he know damn well he'll take that thing to Russia. Oh yeah. Next year, thirty-eight games, eight goals. Oh yeah. He's done. He's gonna weigh four hundred pounds when he gets to camp. I think it's just that this fourteen years of this, Mm -hmm. you know, fighting and being the guy that they even know he's a beast. (laughs) The guy they come up and hit with a stick in the playoffs for fourteen years, and he finally wins it. He's having more. He's how could a he is a he's a Ruski who's the most popular athlete in Washington D.C. since I don't know who. The thing with the keg stands though, never has a sober person mounted. <laughs> no, a keg. no, you're 100. You already right. have to be yes. buried. To be say, oh, I'll do a keg. And stand. I'm pretty proud. My personal best is about 12 seconds. I, I've done it. But here's the thing about it's been a few years. Here's but, the thing about Ovechkin. He's got to weigh 230, doesn't he? He's a big probably. Guy. Yeah, probably. He's a rock he's a man. Brick. He's, and they hold him up, and he's got the beard. He's got the beer all slopping down. His what was beard. the fountain that they jumped in? Did you guys see that one too? I they, heard that. They, yeah. they took it. They took the cup to a fountain. I don't know if it was in the D.C. Oh, area. Or it wasn't. It wasn't the reflecting pool. Was it? My, oh, maybe it was. Man. Here's my favorite part of their whole celebration. No, they're they're skating around the rink with the cup, all happy. And some guy sees a Las Vegas babe with with well endowed chest. They all say, "Hey, look!" <laughs> was she they the all, one who took her shirt off? I there's don't that know. going around the internet too, where she's I right don't. at the ice and she just she's very proud of him, so she just takes her 
Oh, Stop she might have flashed yeah, it to him, but have they paid all a go, lot of money for it. But yeah. they all go, oh, hey, hey. Hey. they interrupt the cup <laughs> celebration. Typical dudes. <laughs> Typical hockey What were players. we doing again? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, we just won the cup. <laughs> That's right. Oh. You know, there's, there's hockey paper players who have branched out, but the great thing about hockey players is while the rest of society has become more dignified in their pursuits of alcohol and, you know, and everything. They're still all a bunch of beer drinkers and probably drink Canadian beer. You know, they don't, <laughs> probably don't drink, you know, they probably drink uh, Labatt's. Yeah. Labatt's did they something. stay in Vegas and party or did they come home? I'll have to find out. I don't know. We're talking. You got, to, got a guy coming up. John Walton from Plymouth, Minnesota. Uh, is the voice of the Caps, and we're going to talk to him. Is he really? Yep, we're going to talk to him. Oh, cool. Later on The best part of them jumping into this fountain and watching the video, Ovi stripped down to just the boxers. (laughs) He said to hell with it. I'm getting all in. you got to establish where this fountain is. Uh, It it looks like it's in in Washington. I believe it's downtown Washington somewhere. Well, they got fountains, but most of them are in honor of the war dead. Yeah, it looks like it's outside of like a mall. It doesn't look like it's, yeah, it it, it doesn't look like it's a memorial of any type. (laughs) They drove around Looking for one. Uh, one. The Sam yeah. Walton uh, fountain. That yeah. parade tomorrow could be something. Oh, man, God. Because you know Obi's going to be blitzed. I mm. told Joe earlier, Pat, that someone had a great tweet about they could re-sign Barry Trotz to a multi-year extension just by returning all of Obi's empty cans <laughs> from these past couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird deal. That uh, I'm sure Trotz is saying, okay, you guys made me hang in the wind all the year. Now, mm-hmm. uh, you know what's amazing about this? Cup victory. Mm-hmm. Their first two playoff games at home, they blew two old leads to Columbus yep. and lost. Yep. And I was, I'm glad I wasn't a Washington <laughs> sports columnist. These choking <laughs> pigs have done it again. <laughs> you know, blowing two old leads, they have no chance. Two months later, they're they're the toasts of uh, the East Coast. When is the last time Washington D.C. had a championship? Ah, was the Redskins? Redskins. We when was we are now number one when it comes to four. When it comes to the four major cities that have the four major sports, we have now uh, passed Washington and uh, our championship drought is now the leading drought. Twenty-seven years for a uh, franchise with. Teams in all four cities. We're number one. I'll be damned. So we got that going for us. Something. (laughs) We got that. Yeah, we do have that going. Kenny and I just watched the video of the uh, where all the guys are are pointing back at the at the lady. Does she ever? uh, Well, you you can barely see her, but what's more, what's funnier, double takes is everybody. All the guys turning around to see her in the stands. You can hardly see her, but you can see their reaction. It's going to be on the right side of your screen. Now he's got the cup. And now everybody's going past the lady with their. They're like. Oh, hey, 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 put the brakes on. Yeah, right. I'm going to go this around is, again, okay? Slap shot has been reincarnated. Yes, yes. Not the style of hockey, but the style of reaction. Because they're the same guys. Yeah. I'm looking at the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to listen to the song. Yeah, Danny, 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 yesterday they had the Clydesdales there. Yeah. Right at the Twins game. What do you want when you get the Clydesdale? Dun, 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 dun. Right. Cunningham, God love him, it isn't his fault, won't shut up. And I'm screaming, I want to listen to the song. Stop it. I want to hear some clopping. Shut up. Sports Talk will return shortly, but now thanks to our great friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than yeah, Federated. It's uh, Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal and Your Money Now. Stocks were modestly higher at the close of trading today, Joe, led by shares of health care companies. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained five points, closing at 25322 The Nasdaq Composite rose 14 points, and the S&P 500 gained two. Net neutrality ends today. The FCC has repealed the set of rules under which regulators treated all companies using the Internet equally. The Trump administration called called it micromanaging. Consumer advocates say the end of net neutrality introduces a two-tiered system that could favor services that pay more to Internet service providers. It was Custer's last strand, a lock of blonde hair that experts believe came from Colonel George Custer, the officer who perished at the Battle of Little Bighorn, was sold at auction over the weekend for more than 12000 bucks. Heritage Auctions says the lock came from the collection of a man who spent decades amassing artifacts 
artifacts related to that historic battle in Montana. Custer is believed to have provided the lock of hair to his wife, Elizabeth, uh, about uh, 12 years earlier to his demise. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Thank you very much, Bruce. Away you go. We're going to check traffic here. This one sponsored by Hotels.com and Northbound 100 already cursed from Highway 81 up to the sluggish eastbound 694. Uh, that shakes loose by the time you hit Highway 65. Westbound 694 also stuttering 65 over the river. If you're rolling between the downtowns, 94, not too bad. 11 minutes each way. Enjoy that. With Hotels.com, get rewarded from seaside cabins to resorts. Hotels.com deals, they come with access to instant savings, too. Hotels.com. You do you and get rewarded. Crosstown and downtown that was originally scheduled for Sunday night only, but then canceled due to rain, and then rescheduled for tonight has been canceled and rescheduled once again for tomorrow night. Uh, That's northbound 35W between Highway 62 and 94, 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. on Tuesday. Wow. Wow. That was one we normally don't play. I've never heard this song before. Fleetwood Mac. God, I haven't heard this in years. Me neither. This is cool. That's from about 1970, isn't it? Is it really? Yeah, somewhere out there. Yeah. I love this part where he says, I was alone. I was alone in the cold of a winter's day. You were alone. Huh. Yeah, they still do this. That sounds pretty good. I was good. alone in the cold of a winter's day. One more hand. Alone, so 1972. That is, uh, Bear Tree is way back before the uh, hit days. Danny Kerwin. Hmm. That's good. I haven't heard that in a long time. Cloudy. Yes, Kenny. I don't think I've ever heard it. Oh, it good. was a, a radio staple. In was it really? Yeah. Yep. This is pretty cool. Cloudy. Uh, some rain in parts of the Twin Cities in 73 degrees. Uh, twins are off. They'll play the Tigers in Detroit tomorrow night. Joe Maurer heading out to Rochester for a rehab assignment. He'll DH tomorrow and then play first base on Wednesday if everything goes well. Could join the Twins during this road trip. Uh, one other Twins note, Eduardo Escobar has been named American League Player of the Week. Escobar hit 462 with two home runs, six doubles, a triple, and eight RBIs. He leads Major League Baseball with 26 doubles, and he is six with a .568 slugging percentage for the season. Eduardo hitting 288, 12 home runs, 39 RBIs, also has 39 extra base hits. News notes from today, St. Paul police said three juveniles, including an 11-year-old boy and two 14-year-olds, have been arrested on suspicion of theft after they were spotted breaking into homes and using a fake fundraising flyer for a basketball team as a way to case potential victims. Police sent crime alerts to the Highland Park, Mac Groveland, and Summit University neighborhoods warning residents to be on the lookout for young kids using the phony fundraising flyer and to lock their doors and windows. St. Paul Police Sergeant Mike Ernster said the crime alert went out because these suspicious activities, including the use of the flyer, continue to happen even after the arrest of the three juveniles. Ernster said the kids are also using the opportunity when they go door-to-door to look for easy targets for burglaries when people do not appear to be home. Tonight's the big meet, of course, between Kim Jong-un and President Trump. Have you noticed all the websites and TV? It's like a prize fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very strange. I have a feeling something <clears throat> weird will happen. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think I, they're going to wrestle? Nah, somebody's going to, you know, expel gas or something, and that'll offend some cultural sensibility. The next thing you know, it's a pie fight. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I think something crazy <laughs> like that. That would be That fun. guy from the late 70s and early 80s with the... Uh, the rainbow hair, yeah, you know, yeah. John three sixteen. He's going to be <laughs> like in between. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they meet at eight o'clock our time. The president, by the way, uh, we found out today will be in Duluth on Wednesday, June twentieth. That news announced by the official Team Trump Twitter account. The last time he visited Minnesota was in November of twenty sixteen, when he made an appearance at a Minneapolis Saint Paul airport hangar during his presidential. Campaign. Now, can, why is he going to Duluth? Yeah, yeah, I'm wondering, can Duluth uninvite him, much like he has done to? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Minnesota Court of Appeal. Why is he going up there? I, I don't know. I, I, That's there was a no, very strong liberal stronghold. There was no uh, indication of the, in the announcement 
why, just that he would be there on June twentieth. Oh. It's I'm sure it's a rally, uh, like he's held what uh, three or four in the last month. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's that kind of. He's going to get up in there and stir things up. He's going to he's going to raise a ruckus. Mm-hmm. Is what he's going to do. <laughs> Minnesota Court of Appeals is reversed. Going to rename Glenn Sheen Trump's Glenn Sheen. Is, isn't that a line from Larry David's show? He got to get up in there and raise, <laughs> raise a ruckus. A ruckus. Raise a ruckus. <laughs> Minnesota Court of Appeals. You okay, Kenny? Oh, you had to see the episode. I'm okay. sorry. Man. <laughs> Minnesota Court of Appeals has reversed an arbitrator's decision to reinstate the Stillwater prison warden who was fired after sending sexually explicit emails. The appeals court ruled today that Stephen Hammer violated Department of Corrections policy and the agency did have just cause to fire him. Hammer was fired in 2016 after allegations he sent lewd emails, shared personal data, and engaged in other behavior that was inappropriate. But last year, an arbitrator ruled he, he should be reinstated, saying the corrections department lacked just cause to fire him. The arbitrator had found he should have faced discipline before being fired. The appeals court disagreed. Hammer has not returned to work while the appeal was pending. United Airlines flight traveling from Rome to, Ch- uh, Rome to Chicago had to be diverted to Ireland due to a potential security concern, according to the airline's. United Flight 971, a Boeing 767-300, landed in Shannon, Ireland, and Irish police are interviewing passengers and crew members. A source familiar with the matter said a written bomb threat was found on board the aircraft, which was carrying 107 passengers, eight flight attendants, and three pilots. The Irish Times reports the threatening message was scribbled on a surface inside one of the plane's bathrooms. The aircraft will be swept for explosives. Passengers will be subject to additional security screening. United says they expect passengers will need to stay the night in Ireland, return to Chicago as police continue their investigation. An Air Force officer with top security clearance who disappeared in New Mexico 35 years ago has been found in California after using a false name for decades. William Howard Hughes Jr. apprehended at his home after a fraud investigation, according to the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Told authorities after his capture last week he was depressed about being in the Air Force. That's when he decided to leave, create a fake identity, and lived in California since vanishing in 1983. Man, he had a good run. That's a long AWOL. Charged with desertion, he's being held at Travis Air Force Base in California. He could face up to five years of confinement, forfeiture of all pay, and dishonorable discharge from the Air Force. Uh, When he was in the Air Force, he'd been involved in classified planning and analysis of NATO's control, command, and communication surveillance systems during the Cold War. He specialized in radar surveillance. He was 33 and single when he vanished, according to news reports from the time of his disappearance. He had just completed a stint in the Netherlands where he worked with NATO officers. He was supposed to be back in Albuquerque by August of 1983. Office of Special Investigation spokesperson told the Albuquerque Journal there's no indication Hughes was involved with the Soviet Union or that any classified information was leaked. Green Lake, the largest freshwater lake on Hawaii's Big Island. Yeah. 200 feet deep. Yeah. Has completely disappeared. Shut up. Another victim of the Kilauea volcano. Is she full? Full of lava? Yep. Lava? Lava lava from Fisher 8 began pouring into Lake June 2nd, turning it into a rolling, roiling, excuse me, cauldron. A thick white plume of water vapor billowed hundreds of feet over the lake. Took only Uh, I was going to ask, excuse me, but where does the water go? But it just it goes it, to vapor. And and while we're at it, can you not use the word fissure again? I, I that won't that word makes me uncomfortable. It only took an hour and a half. Shut up for the molten rock to evaporate the entire wow. body of water. Do we know how big the lake was. Wow, you said two hundred feet deep. I'm going with that. It is two hundred feet deep. No, I, I don't know, but know. I wonder what it is in acres. It's three point uh, nine million hectare acres. What? <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't know. Uh, by the way, uh, it's been around 400 years. It's That's all? It was po- a swimming hole. A popular swimming hole for ages. According to legend, Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes, bathed in the lake when she first came to the island. Huh. A decade ago, Fred Haynes. You know, when you do a lake story, uh-huh. what is the first question that our old friend How the mayor, big of a lake how is How come it? you don't just bring that I in probably, right away? Probably should have looked that yeah. up immediately. Yeah. I should know better, shouldn't I? Yeah. By now. I sure like to know how big that lake was. <laughs> exactly. And he's not joking. Rook's looking. <laughs> I'm looking it up. It does not list the acreage on Wikipedia, so I'll have to go to other... Uh, how, how can it only be 400 years old? Well, it... 
Okay, I don't. I, they come I don't and go, think. Kenny. You can, you can get them. <laughs> you, you can get them. Yeah, I can get, get your lake. Oh, it's going to be after three. You, <laughs> you learn a lot of, about lakes <laughs> on this show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one decade ago, Fred Haynes was wandering the Wichita airport. He was looking for a Nigerian man who would be hauling two chests full of cash for him. After an hour of waiting and asking around, he came to the realization that the He's been duped. $65 million Nigerian fortune he thought he yeah. was inheriting wasn't yeah. showing yeah. up. Duped. Really? Well, if I had a dime every time I fell how, for that. How much in attorney fees did he have to pay to get this uh, money? Well, uh, actually what happens here is uh, he's going to be getting money now. Uh, he was scammed out of $110,000 oh during all God. this. Okay. But thanks to the Kansas Attorney General's office, uh, they've reached a settlement. Because Western Union admitted it knew some of its employees had conspired with the scam artist to build people out of the money and had failed to fix the problem. Oh. Western Union set aside $586 million to create a fund to refund victims across the U.S. and Canada. That many saps got taken for that much, wow. huh? Yeah. And he even mortgaged his house several times, this Haynes file. Oh, geez. Well, he's an idiot. Well, yeah. He's going to get 110 grand back. Rook, why don't you take us to the old break there? And I we'll can be back. certainly do that. Kano's, we're in pretty good shape up here, man. <laughs> that lake info, not available, Suchi boy. Damn. Well, I did find out, though, it is the largest lake in the Hawaiian Islands. Or well, really? it, was, it was the largest lake. Wow. In the can you tell me why it was uh, only invented 500, 400 years ago? Well, I don't know. That invented is the correct Just word. Just discovered, getting, right? Discovered. No, I'm sure it appeared uh, as a result of, uh, you know, your seismic activity <laughs> <laughs> that has to do with okay. the Yeah, that's true. They activity. do create stuff there. Yeah, All right. right. Green Lake Tremors. is situated in idyllic <laughs> Kapoho, which became a ghost town when a lava flow destroyed the entire area after the eruption of oh. Kilauea in 1960. Okay. Except for the lighthouse at Cape Kumakai, all structures were destroyed and buried under the lava. Kapoho was never resettled. You're not bad on those Hawaiian names. You're pretty good. Yeah, Malakaliki Maka. Making not great either. <laughs> Did you guys ever see the video of that Mustang getting eaten by the lava? <laughs> My dad goes out to Maui and he doesn't go out on his deck. He goes out on his lanai. Oh. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah, it's, a bleep, it's a bleeping porch. <laughs> I don't know. Deck. Well, they, there's like, there, it's an alphabet that's missing six or seven letters, so right. it screws yeah. up the whole thing. Yeah. And and they, they they aren't happy with one A. They got to have two. Yeah. Throw a couple in there. Have, a few more gotta, I's. Yeah, it's, it's just very annoying. Get a filler I. Very annoying. If I was the governor of Hawaii, I'd go, i spell all the names English. We have a new vocabulary. <laughs> you know who the spelling is similar to? The fin- Finlanders. They always got double oh. extra A's and all that. But that's based not on Finland. That's based on heavy drinking, though. Yes, it? right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Organizers of an annual skinny dipping event in Ireland announced this year's dip involved a record-breaking 2,505 naked women. Taking yeah, a swim. That, that might not all be what is cracked up. <laughs> How big is the lake, John? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the strip. Can you imagine the bacteria, Suchi boy? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, strip and dip, an yeah, annual that's event. That's a good thing. At Magaramora Beach in County Wicklow. Well, it's probably on the ocean. Sure. How big is that ocean, John? <laughs> How many acres are we talking here? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. they, the 2,505 women shed their clothes, spent at least five minutes in the chilly water, allowing them to break the record. So this is a female-only event. That's okay. correct. All yes. right. And the guys just stand there, stand there and ogle. Yeah, right. pretty much. A couple yeah. of Germans try to get in on it. Like, nine, <laughs> nine. It's mostly just dudes in rain jackets. <laughs> <laughs> Organizers said they bested the previous world record for a mass skinny dip, which was set three years ago in Western Australia, where 786 nude bathers took the plunge. I did raise money for a good cause, uh, 342 grand for a cancer charity. Yeah, if the tonight. caps were anywhere near this, that's... Stanley Cup would never get back to Washington. No. They'd just be sitting there ogling. Hell, they raised a lot of money. That's uh, something we should consider doing. <laughs> you got a pool, Roycey? Sure. Pool. Oh. Well, I did until the lawnmower went in there. Right now, it's uh, right now it's uh, <laughs> out of commission. Yeah, commission how many uh, na- how many naked my talk moms do you think we could cram <laughs> into your pool? Oh God, half a dozen. Oh, well, sure, they're all welcome. 
Uh, we got a fence. All hell? are welcome here. <laughs> From uh, the United Kingdom, it's me or the dogs. That's the choice Liz Haslam's husband, Mike, gave her after 25 years of marriage. So Haslam chose her numerous canines and told Mike to leave. <laughs> Bye-bye. She told express.co.uk, I haven't seen or heard from him since. I thought after 25 years he should know giving up the dogs was not what my intentions were. Aslam was born into an animal-obsessed family. Her mom bred West Highland Terriers, and her father ran an animal food oh, company. Terriers, I don't blame him. <laughs> so when the uh, resident married Mike in 1991, she already had a deep devotion to dogs. Mm-hmm. She turned that passion into her livelihood seven years ago when she moved with the husband to a house with a half acre of land and opened a pet boarding business. That venture eventually evolved to Beds for Bullies, a bull terrier sanctuary that she founded to provide care to rescue bull terriers in need of help. Uh, Since letting her husband leave 18 months ago, Haslam has not spoken at all to Mike, even though the former couple has a 22-year-old son. You know damn well what the problem was. She made him do a lot of the work, shovel up the dog poop and stuff. She wanted him to help. If she was willing to do it all herself, he would have stayed. That'd be my guess. Finally, he just had enough. That's right. I'm not doing your work for these damn mutts. I don't blame them. Did she run the rescue deal, John? Uh, uh, no, not a rescue. She she does now, uh, as I, I was just getting to, actually. I'm sorry, She's John. expanded the number of dogs she's taking in as part of a rescue and has also offered shelter to a homeless man. I think she, uh, I Can think you the imagine the, the right smell yes, inside that house? I think well, the guy, yeah. Well, they, I would imagine they're outside kennels. They're not in the house. There's got to be a couple of them inside. Mm. There is uh, one other problem, though. She's going to have to take a break from rescuing dogs for a while. The animal rescuer says her landlord has given her an eviction notice. Okay. She now has to find a new home for herself and the growing number of rescue dogs she's caring for. So, Joe, I think you might be correct. Oh, we uh, we really miss you, uh, Roy C. and Chris, during that last segment because John trotted out about five of these super uh, interesting stories. <laughs> and we, we just sat here and gave them the blank stare. So we, we could actually use you guys. We, we your, were uh, occupied. Your we curiosity occupied. Uh, really helps John out. <laughs> yeah. Man, thanks for trying. You guys. You guys. We just, him we just sat here. <laughs> you burned through about six stories. Uh, we I, I was well. watching YouTube clips. Did he start curb, giving it this one? Curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing about, Reavers. You gave me that story. Mm-hmm. I love that That's story. That's not a bad story. <laughs> there. Uh, so uh, there, Kenny. Okay. So there. Mm, all right. Okay. Me or the dogs? Did she picked the dogs. I like the story, what, too. Did we have a photo of her? Uh, there were several with the picture or with these stories. Was, yeah. was there any reason for him to regret his departure? No, and then uh, she's yeah, uh, by, okay. she's no. now a middle aged woman. Okay, so, right. you she know. sounds like a pain in the ass, no matter what she looks like. <laughs> right. Please, looks don't matter here. Yes, right. A Florida family woke up confused to the sounds of workers up on their roof, okay. tearing their roof off. Huh. Because they weren't supposed to be there. You now, need a roof. roof. Now, now that's <laughs> a practical <laughs> joke. I got up one morning and the roof did quite literally around the roof. <laughs> I get your roof. Pearl Northrop said her family woke up at their Lehigh Acres home to the loud banging of the roof being removed from the house. Uh, Northrop got up and called the person who owned the house. She doesn't own the house. She has a landlord, Sarah Fritchie, to ask why mm. she wasn't warned about the project. Fritchie said, well, I didn't warn you because no work had been ordered. <laughs> Whoops. Such remind us when when the dark man ordered the guys to come to you, uh, to your house. Did you when you walked out? Did you ask them who they were? I, I forget how that interaction this occurred. Only in the most casual of conversations, <laughs> and I said something to the effect that, "Man, I got to get up and fix that roof." <laughs> it was fall. next day you had a roof. <laughs> what are you next, complaining about? The next morning they're on a the roof, and I, I went out there and I said to the guy, "What's the deal?" He says, "Well, George said you need a roof." <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Anywho, they were at the wrong house. Is that the punchline, uh, John? It is, and uh, they apparently did just put the wrong address into their GPS. Oh, okay. So well, they'll, they'll take care of well, it. Well, you should knock on that. You always knock on the door. That's Good the idea. moral of that story. Yes. yes.
do you got coming up? You got the Washington Caps Fantastic. radio guy. John Walton, Plymouth, Minnesota, the voice of the Washington Caps, uh, is with us to uh, talk about the celebration, the ongoing celebration, which will be capped by tomorrow's parade in Washington. It will be. They might have as almost as big a crowd as Don had for the uh, record-breaking crowd for the inauguration. And uh, also uh, Bob Herrig from Shinnecock. The uh, ESPN golf writer. So, uh, how, how did that guy get from columns. Plymouth, Minnesota, to the voice of the Caps? Well, he Long ended, and he ended up going to uh, college at Miami University in Ohio, got involved in hockey, and he was a hockey guy and started announcing games there and worked his way up the ranks. And uh, Harrigan from uh, ESPN? Bob Harrig. Bob Harrig, Harrig will be with us from Shinnecock, uh, the ESPN golf columnist. 1500 ESPN is KSTP St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's 73. The ride is coming up next.